trouble sleeping? Well, that is a huge problem for so many people these days. And I'll tell you with my current schedule and responsibilities, it includes me at times as well. So let me tell you what I have found to help me sleep better. Sleep cream. Sleep cream is a revolutionary new product made from all natural ingredients and with pure CBD. You simply rub it on sensitive skin areas right before bed. I will be honest, I was a bit of a skeptic, but after trying it once, I was amazed that it really works. They use all natural CBD combined with the finest essential oils, including lavender, and you just rub it on before bed before turning in for the evening. Bottom of my feet, inside of my forearms, those places work the best for me. And within minutes, it helps me relax and allows my body to do what it is supposed to do, which is sleep. You can find their amazing product at sleepcream.com. Just try sleep cream for a couple of nights and see if it works for you as well as it worked for me. If you don't experience better sleep, sleep cream will refund your entire purchase. That's simple. Go to sleepcream.com. That's sleep, C-R-E-M-E.com. And for the next few weeks, you can use code NOVEMBER24 at checkout to save $24 off of your first order. That's NOVEMBER24 at checkout, all one word. Are you ready for the best sleep ever? Sleep, C-R-E-M-E dot com. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Tonight, we are joined by Public Square Live and Turning Point USA contributor Aaron Elmore, as well as editor-in-chief of The Post Millennial, Libby Emmons. Welcome back, ladies. We've got a big evening underway here. Obviously, the VP debate. Uh, this will be J.D. Vance and Tim Walls facing off in, you know, I guess, minutes uh, away, an hour away or so. And... I'm very interested in how both of you are feeling about this debate. What I know is that it's been very apparent that as much as they're trying to keep uh, Kamala Harris out of the public eye, Libby, they're kind of doing the same thing with Tim Walz. I guess the number two can't upstage the, the number one, so to speak. But that said, we haven't seen a whole lot of Tim Walls out there. And um, I did see that he was at a Michigan-Minnesota game, didn't get quite the same reception as Donald Trump did at the Alabama-Georgia game. So Libby, just give me your expectations as we're heading into, I assume, probably the last debate of any variety before this election. Yeah, I think you're right. They are having Tim Waltz stay a bit out of the spotlight. And when he was at that uh, Michigan Minnesota game he appeared to be flipping off some of the fans yeah, yeah. who were there who were pro Trump so you know perhaps he's got a similar attitude to Kamala and her brat vibe but yeah we haven't seen a lot of him and I think that's with good reason every time he opens his mouth he seems to make kind of a fool of himself and people remember that he exists and go dredge up all of his connections to the Chinese Communist Party yeah, it's so it'll be up to J.D. Vance, Aaron, to kind of expose, I think, who Tim Walls is. And look, the 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 other side of the aisle is that while Kamala Harris and Tim Walls are employing the basement strategy, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance have been out everywhere, it feels like, across the country, nonstop working. Um, but you have had Re House Republican whip Tom Emmer He's from Minnesota, yep. and he has been helping J.D. Vance prepare for this debate. This was interesting to me, the things that he had to say. He said, when the senator and I are talking, we're going to show his Minnesota nice fraud personality. So it's as though he's got this nice folksy demeanor, he says. Uh, this is of Tim Walls. And J.D. Vance is prepared to expose that and all of the radical policies that Tim Walls has held as governor of the state of Minnesota. Um, I guess um, on the other side, Walls has been doing some debate prep of his own. It sounds like he's been practicing with Pete Buttigieg standing in as J.D. Vance. So um, I don't know if that is going to be helpful or not for him. But do you think that J.D. Vance is going to be able to expose Tim Walls and and really kind of get him on his, you know, keep him on his toes and maybe 
expose that he's a radical and that this is the far the most far left radical ticket we've ever seen in the history of politics with Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. There, you know, usually vice presidential debates aren't that needle moving. And I think in this instance, it's going to be a really, really big deal because of that yeah. radical agenda. And J.D. Vance is like, we may as well call him the janitor because he is going to mop the floor. <laughs> with Tim Waltz, right? And I think we should call Tom Emmer the grave digger because what he's doing, you know, being from Minnesota, he's digging up those buried bodies and getting those skeletons out of the closet for Tim Waltz. But here's my only concern. Tim Waltz wants to play this like super sweet, oh shucks, woe is me, my hands are clean, but I'm in there changing the carburetor in the car. We're like, hold on. But what I think he's going to do, because we've seen him in other interviews saying things like, well, you know, I don't always choose the right words and gee shucks, like goofy, like hur, hur, I don't know what to say. So when at, when JD is out there making these cogent, articulate, eviscerating points, I think Walsh is just going to say, look, guys, if you want the Harvard guy, you're going to get him. But I'm just your neighbor. I'm just your friend. I'm not a trained politician. Well, shucks. And as we know, the mainstream media is not on our side, even though Mark Cuban tries to say that they are. They're going to run cover for this. Like, wow, well, we don't want to make fun of someone who has difficulty speaking or we really should oh, have God. compassion for him. That's my take on what we're going to see on the debate stage in just a few short hours. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, the only the thing I would say, and I, I hope that J.D. Vance points this out, if if he does try to go that route, is that J.D. Vance comes from very humble beginnings. Yep. He really is the the picture of the American dream, starting out where he did and and obviously ending up now as a United States senator running for vice president of the United States. It's really amazing. Here, Libby, was my favorite comment, though, because, you know, I go straight to the comment section and see what people are saying out there. It gives me like an overall vibe and, and take on what people think. Somebody said, will Waltz be wearing his best pearl earrings for the debate? Now, I thought that was very funny. That's um, funny. We know that Kamala Harris had some interesting earrings she wore. Now, what those were all about, I don't know. But I thought that was very funny. I think overall, though, um, this this is, to Aaron's point, a little bit of a, a, a much more important um, debate in the grand scheme of things because we really haven't seen, like I said, much of Waltz. We haven't seen much of Kamala. And when they're kind of hiding away and we're not getting a lot from them, People need to seize on these opportunities to actually learn about who they are and what they want to do for this country. And I will personally be interested to see how Tim Walls is able to defend the four years that Kamala Harris has spent currently right there, right now in the White House. How is he defending the fact that everything has gone in the wrong direction? How is he defending the fact that we've had probably 20 million people illegally cross our border? How is he defending any of the things that we've seen happen? And how is he going to argue that if Kamala Harris so badly wants to change things, she could do it right now. She doesn't need to wait until January of 2025. Do you feel like, Libby, we're going to get a lot of answers on those? No, I actually don't. And I think that that's in keeping with this campaign at large this whole time. Kamala Harris still hasn't had a press conference. She has yeah. only taken interviews with people who are incredibly friendly to her and say things like, you know, Miss Vice President, can you tell us why you're so amazing? You know, <laughs> how do you maintain your amazingness and also you're beautiful? So that's all we've really seen from the Kamala Harris, Tim Waltz campaign. And that is what we are going to see more of. Tim Waltz can't answer for any of these things because Kamala Harris can't answer for any of these things. Her recent trip to the board Border over the weekend was the second time she visited the border during the vice presidency, even though she was tasked by Joe Biden in March 2021 with the job of securing the border and figuring out route migration, which she then attributed to, you know, LGBTQ people not feeling comfortable in Honduras or whatever. So that's what we're going to see more of. All they really have are attacks against Trump. And, you know, to their credit, they know that their hard left base also only has attacks against Trump. That's what they're interested in seeing. But the American people are far removed from their views in 2020, right? When you had social media conspiring against Americans to suppress their free speech. And so many more people are just sick of it. And you can even see just on social media or in public or when you drive around, people are a lot more comfortable saying like, no, I'm voting for Trump. I'm right. not here for this nonsense anymore. People are aware of what they want and they're willing to state it. And and I think that also you're right, that this is going to be a much bigger 
um, ele uh, uh, election event, this VP debate than we've seen in the past. And it's because the main Democrat candidate cannot stand and say what it is that she will deliver or why she hasn't delivered it already. Yeah, I, I, Libby, you're so spot on with the, the fact that I think people are starting to feel a little more able to voice their support for Donald Trump. The interesting thing, though, is, and, and you just said this as well, there is really no argument for Kamala Harris. It is really an argument always against Donald Trump. And I, I had this moment over the weekend where I found out that uh, some people who were are very close to me, they're extended members of my family, actually, are considering voting for Kamala Harris. And when questioned about this, they have nothing to say in terms of why they want to vote for her. It is all because they have tuned in to MSNBC oh. and gotten bad information. And it actually is very frightening how easily indoctrinated people become whenever you get information from a singular source like MSNBC. And I'll give you the three reasons that they say they're nervous about voting for Donald Trump. Project 2025, which every single person in the campaign, Donald Trump himself, has said has nothing to do with Donald Trump. He said that multiple times. He said it at his debate against Kamala Harris. He said it every chance he's gotten. So Project 2025, which I guess they're still spouting off over at MSNBC, they are worried that he will become a dictator and not want to leave office, will change things in the United States Constitution so that he can be president for life. Are you kidding me with this nonsense? This is the kind of fear mongering that they're using on these networks out there to scare people away from Donald Trump. And then of course, the abortion thing becomes yeah. an issue for everyone. So your three takeaways are Project 2025, which is a lie, Donald Trump wanting to be a dictator, which is a lie, and the possibility of a federal abortion ban, which is a lie. So all of the reasons that people out there that I know personally don't want to vote for Donald Trump and want to vote for Kamala Harris. It has nothing to do with the fact that they think this is going to be a great person in Kamala Harris to lead the country. It has everything to do with the fear mongering and the scare tactics, Aaron, that they have used out there masterfully in the mainstream media. And I would guess that if you talk to just about any person out there who considers themselves a Democrat, this is likely what you're going to hear from them. So if we can get out there and we can talk to everyone about those three things, I do think it may move the needle, at least for some, and perhaps prevent some of these people from casting a vote for Kamala Harris, who would be a threat to democracy. This is a party who has obviously just done away with any democratic process whatsoever in plugging her in. This is the person in Kamala Harris who says she wants to eliminate the filibuster Gonna and she wants that. to go ahead and sign in legislation from the federal government that has to do with abortion. And we know what her Project 2025 is. It is a disaster like we've just seen for the past four years. You're going to get another four of it and maybe even eight if you elect Kamala Harris into the White House. Aaron, I thought that was shocking. But then again, I don't tune in that often. I try to, but it's painful to some of these uh, outlets. But does that surprise you to hear that people are not voting for Kamala Harris? They're simply voting against Donald Trump in this election? We know it's been like that since he got into politics. But, you know, what I ask the people when they say Project 2025, I say, oh. who authored it? What propositions are in it? And they can never answer those questions. And then I say things like, well, how about this? Once you become more informed on the issues, then maybe you're perhaps better informed to make yourself a political decision. And I was going to say exactly what you said about the filibuster. You yeah. know, Republicans aren't the party that wants to say you have to go to a government school. We say school choice. We say vaccines, I don't know, should be optional. We say we're not going to tax unrealized gains. So the party that doesn't want to restrict our life is the Republican Party. It's the Democrats that say, we need more censorship and we want to control what goes on inside of your home. We aren't the party that are making these decisions for you. And the abortion issue, I hate when it becomes such a hot button issue because it has been litigated. Donald Trump's yeah. viewpoints on abortion are the same as Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> Honestly, they really truly are. What she said and what Donald Trump has said myriad of times is this is a state's rights issue. And when all right. the liberals scream and have steam coming out of their ears saying, I don't want nine men in robes judging what I do with my body. That's exactly what Donald J. Trump has said. The Supreme Court has spoken and said, 
you live in a state, you elect your state officials, you vote in state elections. This is a state issue. Let's keep it out of government. Again, we're trying to make government smaller. So it's truly a shame that these liberals aren't voting on policy, but personality. And you've even seen recently like Ben Stiller and Julia Louis-Dreyfus from Seinfeld. She said, you know, I don't really know the issues, but I know I'm voting for Kamala. Ugh. And it's it, to me, we're at a sad place in America if you can't spout off three or four reasons why you're voting for someone. I totally agree. Libby, you know, we were talking about the the football games this weekend, and it's amazing to me because I do feel like with a younger demographic, there is a big shift. You can feel it out there, but the Gall- there was a Gallup poll that was recently released that a, a bigger majority of um, young voters, these are first-time voters, 18 to 24-year-olds, identify now as Republican versus Democrat, and this is for the first time in decades, 48% identifying as Republicans versus 45 as Democrats. And on the issues that matter most, it turns out that people trust um, Republicans more than Democrats, 46 to 41. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting the I'm getting the numbers wrong. Sorry, the people, the, the uh, group identifying as Republicans, 26% of them, these are the 18 to 24 year olds, and 22% identify as liberal so but that is a that is a big shift that is something that we did not traditionally see you also had a a poll that notre dame did they pulled 705 students and it shows that for the first time in 12 years the republican candidate which is obviously obviously donald trump is the one that on campus right now among their voters and the 705 kids they polled would win if the the election were held at notre dame university that movement, I think, is really significant because you've seen for a long time a stranglehold that the Democrats have had over the youth vote in this country. They have thought they owned that and that they could do no wrong with the young voters, that they just had them. That's that's pretty significant that they're all voting for Donald Trump. And, you know, you went out to a couple of tailgates uh, at, at Alabama over the weekend. You're hard pressed to find anybody out there who wants to vote for Kamala Harris. Yeah, we've had a Democrat stranglehold, not just on our politics and our youth and minority voters for years, but they've had a stranglehold on education. And I think that has a lot to do with why you're seeing so many young people turn away from them. The uh, principles that they've been pushing in education are authoritarian, they're identitarian, they're opposed to free speech, opposed to the practice of religion at all, opposed to a free press, they're opposed to our second A, right, you know, our, our two-A rights. They're opposed to a lot of these things in the Bill of Rights, and we see that repeatedly. And if you're a young person in this country, one of the biggest promises for you is that you're going to grow up and have your freedom. You're going to be able to do as you please. You're going to have an economic system that is full of opportunity for you to raise a family, to pursue business interests, to pursue your own ideas and dreams. And that is all being squashed by this democratic uh, influence in education and in politics. And I think young people are aware of that. If there's anything that American young people want, it's to cast off everything that they have been told to do, strike out on their own and figure it out for themselves. And that is what conservatives in this country are actually offering. They're saying, Saying, you can be proud of who you are. You can be who you are without being categorized and put into little boxes. You can live as you please without being told that you are bad for your own independent thoughts or wants or interests. And I think that uh, that's a huge thing. And that is also something that differentiates the MAGA movement from the traditional Republican movement right. and really gives a step forward and opens that tent. You know, the hugest thing for me is the promise of free speech. That is my go-to, ride or die, main thing, main interest, single voter issue, free speech. And that is what that conservatives are offering now. That is what MAGA offers. And that's what Trump has promised to protect. And I think that uh, our young people are aware of that as well. Yeah, no one knows better than Donald Trump how they can uh, try and shut you down in terms of your free speech. So the Gallup poll, Aaron, that I was referencing uh, essentially says that more Americans overall today identify Mm -hmm. as Republicans than they do Democrats for the first time in decades. And that is 48 percent of them identifying as Republican and 45 percent of them identifying as Democrats. And what somebody pointed out underneath this poll online is that if this is accurate, then the polls are are significantly 
underestimating Donald Trump because you always see D plus three to five in all the polling out there, right? You never see R plus three to five in these polls. So if that is true, then I mean, I feel like the election is over. Obviously, we're not going to operate that way. But I think that the, the Democrats really have done themselves a disservice. Libby just went through a whole list of reasons why at least young people certainly are turning to uh, Republicans over Democrats right now. But, you know, you just had to live the past three and a half years in this country to see how bad it could get under Democrat rule. And I have to guess that that probably has been very damaging to their entire party. Hey, ladies, wouldn't it be amazing to support a skincare company that shares our values and celebrates faith, family and freedom and proudly stands behind conservative causes? Well, I have found the perfect skincare brand and it's called Nimi. Nimi offers simplified daily routines that cleanse, brighten, protect and help fight the key signs of aging. You can literally just clear out your entire cabinet and replace all your miscellaneous products with an effective routine from Nimi. Nimi offers clean, effective skincare proudly made in the USA that stands strong against the woke progressive beauty companies that back anti-American causes. Nimi has luxurious skincare for all skin types, offering cleansers, toners, moisturizers, serums, and more. I personally love Nimi's clean line as it offers high-end clean skincare products that are free from fragrance and other chemicals that may disrupt your skin's natural microbiome. Build a custom bundle and save up to 20% off your routine. Plus, use code Lara for an additional 5% off. Visit NimiSkincare.com. That's N-I-M-I Skincare.com to elevate your routine with America's skincare company or click the link in my bio to save big on your order using code Lara today. Far too many veterans who served our country honorably are now homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. Glenda Williams is a U.S. Army veteran who faced homelessness along with her five children. Glenda was struggling to keep up with her rent and basic living expenses. She lived in a dilapidated unit with rodents, mold, broken windows, and broken electrical appliances. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation Homeless Veterans Program provided Glenda with not just shelter, but also a safe and secure environment where she and her children could thrive. Glenda has since returned to school to pursue a degree and her children are excelling in their studies. Imagine what it means to veterans like Glenda to know that people like you were there to make sure that she and her family had a safe and stable home and a solid foundation to build a new beginning. For Glenda's family and so many others like them, friends like you make all the difference. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. That's T, the number two, T.org. Absolutely. And I also think if we go back to the young people for a moment, young people want to go out after college, be able to get a good job, buy a home, get married, start a family. What the Democrats are doing are making that highly impossible. We Mortgage yeah. rates are through the roof. Regulations are making it nearly impossible to start business. Maybe these young people are feeling the brunt of that. And I think the young men in this country are realizing we have value, too, because they'll say, don't act like that. It's toxic masculinity. Oh, geez. And, and I think these young men, too, are, are, are rebelling and saying we, too, have worth in this society. And we are not being shown that through the Democrat Party. And they're really having that pendulum swing. And the thing that makes me happy about all of this is we worry about our children being indoctrinated in school. And I like small victories. And maybe this is a small victory because there was another poll at Harvard that had similar results as well. Yeah. Saying, guess what, teachers that are trying to teach our children about 13 genders and different pronouns and over-sexualizing them at the young age. Guess what? It's not working. You're losing. And we're finally winning and fighting back. But to the main point about why more people are trusting the Republicans and thinking about voting at Republican is everything they tell us on TV, TV we're seeing is not true in our communities. We're seeing the right. gas prices. We're seeing the grocery prices. We're seeing the crime. I saw a clip on the internet of, about a woman, in, a woman in New York City who lived there forever. She saw like pigeons being sacrificed on the streets of New York. So like, this is the first time for me and I've lived here 20 years. You're seeing things that you have never seen. You cannot ride the subway. You cannot be alone as a woman at night. And the government on the left is saying, everything's fine. We're having the best economy. And everyone is saying, no, we're not. I'm not listening to this anymore. You are gaslighting me. Yeah, the other well, thing all- too, Erin, you mentioned young men, and I think young men also see that Democrats mm-hmm. want to send them off to war. 
Yeah. And Donald Trump has promised to not send them off to war. True. Yeah. How about or that? Or make sure that Zelensky's wife can spend $2 million at a designer store when they're visiting the United States. Heard about that one? Wow. Oh, did that really? happen? Where did I'm she not going to say, I, I, I will say there are allegations oh. that, you know, we keep giving them money, but the victims of the hurricane in North Carolina aren't really getting all the money that we're sending to Ukraine with no accounting. We don't see a dollar of where it's going. We have absolutely no idea what happens when it goes over there. And there are allegations that Zelensky's wife was spending like $2 million in a very high end designer store. That's a lot. It's a lot to drop in one haul. Wow. It uh, is. Okay. Well, somebody somebody got some nice uh, money flow this weekend. Yeah. I'll tell you uh, what I think is part of the reason that the, the Democrats have lost a lot of support. I think people really are starting to see, Aaron, like you said, you can't lie to people and just kind of get away with it. And that's what they've done. They first lied about Joe Biden and his cognitive ability. And, and I don't know where Joe Biden is. Does anyone know where Joe Biden is right now, does he still know he's president? No. The whole thing is really frightening, I think, to a lot of people. But one of the things that we've been gaslit, if you want to say that, lied to about, is the border. And oh, yeah. every single person in this country understands that our border has not been secured. It has not been taken mm -hmm. care of. It has been wide open. The Border Patrol agents I saw with my own eyes when I was down there two weeks ago do not have any ability to control anything on the southern border. They just are resigned to be you know, people processing illegal immigrants into the country. That's what they're doing now. So Kamala went down there. Finally, the second time she took a trip in the entirety of her tenure as borders are down to the southern border. And um, obviously, we know it was a photo op. She went to Douglas, Arizona, and the Border Patrol Union immediately called her out for it. They said Vice President Harris has ignored the border problem she created for over three years. She goes down there for 20 minutes for a photo op and decides to repeat some of the things that the Border Patrol Union has said before. But where has she been for the past three and a half years? I'm going to say, Libby, that border visit by Kamala Harris, I actually think was very detrimental for her. I uh -huh. think she may have been better off just playing the role that she has for the past three and a half years, which is ignoring the problem and not trying to call it out because everything she did down there was so fake and phony and just had absolutely nothing behind it whatsoever. Clearly a political photo op. I yeah. think this she may find this is a bit of a damaging visit versus anything positive out of it. Real quick before you go, Libby, she wore business lady trousers and a sensible pump to the border. Laura, you were just at the border. That's yeah, all that's I have not to what say I about. had on. That's not what you I had on. You saw her necklace. You saw her necklace. People are saying it's the, a sixty-two thousand dollars. Sixty thousand dollar necklace. Yeah. I was too. I was too focused on the sensible pumps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did find her outfit really. Um, it was. It was not in keeping with what you'd think about for like trekking around in the muck. You know what I mean? It was yeah. a sixty-two thousand well, dollar necklace. She wasn't going to trek in the muck. No. She didn't care about doing any of that. She never has cared about that. Whoever yeah. told her to wear the outfit, by the way, completely ridiculous, including this necklace, if indeed it is $60,000. Get the heck out of here. Yeah, it's really uh, absurd. And it's like you say, she is fake to the core. So she doesn't yeah. even realize that it was a fake visit. She doesn't even realize that shaking hands with border control agents while you're getting your picture taken isn't actually real work. There was a photo circulating that also showed her uh, allegedly working on hurricane relief. And if you look, it looks like the paper in front of her is blank. It looks like her AirPods, her like wired earphones are not actually plugged into her phone. And it's oh clearly just a picture of her in front of the seal of the vice president on her, uh, you know, on Air Force Two. So I, I think that she believes that photo ops are real work. We saw that also when she went to Pramonti Brothers in Western PA last month, and yep. they got rid of all of the paying customers and bust in a bunch of supporters instead. And this is what passes for this campaign as real work, as getting into it, as talking to real people who are bust in. Uh, this is what we're going to see if she's president. And I think that that needs right. to be clear to yeah. the American voters, because if she's president, what we'll see are photo ops. We will see her never giving a press briefing. We will see her never taking interviews with uh, any kind of hostile press. And if you look at what Trump does, he goes out there to hostile press all the time and he handles himself 
well. Uh, he has respect for the people he's talking to, no matter who they are, no matter how much that he disagrees with them. He attempts to engage in an open dialogue. And Kamala Harris absolutely refuses to do that. Like, look at this thing where she's trying to bait him into uh, another debate, but she refuses to have one on Fox. You know, right. she only there was a debate it, set up um, that she MSNBC. refused to do. Yeah, NBC, CNN, where they will ask her little cute questions about how nice and wonderful she is. And she can talk about how much she loved her lawn or grew up middle oh. class or whatever other nonsense without actually, you know, mentioning what her, her drive to power or any of those things. That's what uh, that's what she wants to do. And um, I, I don't think anyone's really uh, fooled by this. No. Certainly, certainly not. Certainly not in social media. By well, Libby, Libby, by the way, going back to your Primanti brothers. So I spent the first 18 years of my life in Pittsburgh going to Primanti brothers. And I have friends that are still there. And they said they saw the white vans. I don't think that's widely reported enough that when Donald Trump goes somewhere, these are all unique, honest, authentic interactions. Kamala yeah. has to pay people to be there. They shuttle them in like the white, you know, church vans that I, that's how I describe them. And literally they're being paid to be there and be happy mm -hmm. and look smiley and smile for the camera. And I said to my friend, send me the video of the vans. I will make this viral because it's truly, it's, it's misrepresenting America. It's misrepresenting her support. They want to create this authenticity, the lightning in a bottle that Donald Trump has. She ain't it. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's like she it's really is be trying managed. to stage a reality TV show. Yeah, yes, yeah, it sounds exactly like she's managed. on The Real Housewives of the White House. They cannot, <laughs> oh they cannot allow Kamala Harris in an unmanaged, been. uncontrolled environment. It's why she can't go to the Al Smith dinner, that she turned that down, which is a slap in the face to Catholics. I hope everybody understands that. That, yep. that They cannot afford to just let her. Imagine she walks in to one of these places where you're probably going to have a mix of people. Donald Trump doesn't care. He'll no. show up anywhere. But imagine she gets heckled. How is she going to react to that? How is that going to go? Imagine somebody sticks a mic in her face and says, hey, what's going on with the fact that you have 13,000 uh, murderers running around the streets of, of the country that you guys just let cross the border and let out? How about the 420,000 criminals who've come over the border on your watch? What do you have to say about that? She can't answer any of those questions and that's why everything has to be scripted everything has to be controlled that's why that that uh abc news debate was just a full-blown uh theatrical performance between kamala harris and the moderators it's sick and disgusting but it does take me back to the southern border because what i just said um aaron is actually shocking that we're not hearing more about this i know i've heard it on fox but abc cbs I don't know, maybe they said something on NBC. I have not heard enough about the fact that you have 420 convicted criminal, 20,000, I'm sorry, convicted criminals that they just let out. Uh, ICE put this report out. They're roaming the country. They're free to go. 15,000 uh, people who've been accused and uh, of sexual assault or charged with sexual assault in their home countries, 13,000 of them uh, convicted of homicide. And whenever you hear Donald Trump say things on the campaign trail at rallies, at you know, during interviews, and you've heard him say this before, which is, you know, there is a reason why the prisons in places like Venezuela, they've had a decline and a decrease in their, um, in issues in their country and crime in their country. It's because they're sending all of these criminals to the United States. A lot of people heard that and they were like, oh, there goes Donald Trump again. Really? Aaron, no, it's it is true and it's real. And where, where is the media frenzy around this why isn't anyone concerned that we have these people just out and about and just roaming around the country well we sound like a broken record but we'll say it once again for the people in the back and just a little louder the mainstream media is running cover for democrats and their policies and unfortunately this is not a uniquely american experience when germany imported a lot of migrants under mass migration like we're right. doing now a lot of women were being raped in cologne germany and guess what happened there was no reporting on it by journalists. The media wouldn't cover it. The police were trying to cover it up because they are all in cahoots against us, right? That's that's what they try to do. They can't say that Lakeland Riley was killed by uh, an illegal migrant who might have been part of the TDA gang from Venezuela, by the way, because they have to run cover and make it look like it's innocent. We are seeing this happen in all 50 states. Every state is a border state, and we have no 
sort of accountability to that in the mainstream media because they need to get Kamala over the finish line in November. It's really gross, I'll tell you, Libby, uh, to see this stuff and to see that it really has, obviously, Aaron just mentioned, you know, Lake and Riley, uh, Jocelyn Nungari, it has real impact in people's lives. You've got the the Venezuelan gang obviously taking over the apartment complex in Aurora, Colorado, but it's just a matter of time as far as I'm concerned. Before you see something really horrific happen yeah. on a mass scale here in America, I'll tell you one thing, if you think that it's it's you know, hard to get anything over that border. I saw with my own eyes, there are areas, there are sections. They can't, they can't put people in these sections, but they're wide open and they know people go through. Those are the gotaways. Those are the ones no one knows about. I can imagine uh, if you really wanted to bring something really awful into this country that could hurt a lot of Americans and you hated this country, that would be a, a, the time to do it and the place to get it over the the Southern border. So for me, I'm just sadly waiting for there to be some sort of a terrorist attack as a result of the open border policies of Kamala Harris. And no one is talking about that to the extent that I kind of feel like we should as well. We know that they have they found some terrorists, but a lot of people are just coming across and no one's ever going to know about them, Libby. Yeah. So you don't think that Kamala Harris proposal to put fentanyl detection uh, units at, at border crossings is going to be effective. You don't think that's going to do it? Uh, we <laughs> going to be great. Right? Great plan. Really good. Just like the TSA. Yeah. I'm sure it'll go really well. We have had administration officials warning against potential terror attacks that would be, uh, could perhaps be happening in the United States as more and more people pour across the border and are not vetted. And this is something that is extremely disturbing, as you mentioned, and it should be disturbing to a lot of people. There's tons of people coming across and they are granted asylum because all you have to do, uh, or they're granted, you know, a court date for asylum and they get to 10 wait years around later. For a it's of like years. it's 20, right. yeah, 2034 it's is when they're going to mm -hmm. go to court. So, it, I mean, and I think yeah, it's, it's like not soon, 3% of them show. Like, right. Exactly. And they're allowed to hang out until then. And all you have to say to be given a court date is that you fear retribution at home or you fear for your safety at home or you fear for your family's safety at home. That's all you have to do. And you're let in and you can dump your documents come across the border, give a fake name, give a fake age, and come in and do whatever you want. There's a case in Virginia in Loudoun County where there was actually a young man who enrolled as a high school student, and he is with the MS-13 gang. Uh, and he's he's known to be that. Nobody told parents, nobody told anybody that that's what was going on at the school. And we are being infiltrated. Uh, it's not even a, ma a matter of saying, you know, immigrants shouldn't come in at this point. It's the sheer volume of people that are coming in that we cannot actually integrate into the United States that do not want to be integrated, that have, in many cases, their own motivations and wants to hurt America, to hurt Americans, or to just engage in their multinational criminal enterprises that are going on. We have sex trafficking, child yeah. trafficking, human trafficking, drug trafficking, all of these other things that are happening. And there's absolutely no accountability from this administration. And this administration, the face of it right now is Kamala Harris. And she's making all of these promises about what she will do. And she hasn't done any of it. There's no reason to believe that any of these promises have any weight behind them. Because this is also the face of an administration that does not believe in deportations. We had Mayorkas right. come out and say that directly, that he thinks deportation is a bad policy. And when he was talking about it, he gave the example of one man, one individual, right. and how hard it is to, to deport one individual. Um, and that's shocking. And there is polling that shows that Americans are ready for just mass deportation. Just get out. You know, get out. Come through legal channels. There's lots of great people in the country who want to come here through legal channels, and they're the ones who should be given the priority. And Kamala Harris, if she gets in, she's going to give a mass amnesty, and there's no way that she won't try and do that. And by the way, the, the you know, the talking point Kamala Harris always has I'm the only person on this stage who has prosecuted transnational gangs and all that. There's no evidence, as far as I have seen, that Kamala Harris ever prosecuted anything. She may have had people who worked for her when she was in office as a prosecutor. I, I, I No one has been able to show me any evidence of that whatsoever. If the, it exists out there, I would love for somebody to show us any of that, because that's the, that's the line she always defers to, and you're right, Libby, they do dump their IDs on the other side of the border. When I went down there, we were on the U.S. side, and then we went to uh, the Mexican side of the border, and 
all scattered in the bushes there. It's, it's just people's IDs. They just dump them because the, the look, the cartels run this whole operation and it's it's just it's not even question. The cartels drive the you could see them all drive up like a mile and a half away. They let them the people out and they say, OK, you're going to get to the border. But before you get there, uh, you've got to get rid of all your IDs. So just dump them on this side of the border. Nobody's even going to question you. They tell them exactly what needs to happen to get them into the United States. And it is it's we just we have no idea what's going on. It's it's all terrifying. Um, by the way, before we end today, I just want to end on a really dumb note with a Mother Jones editor oh, who yeah. landed. She was on an Alaskan Airlines flight landing in San Francisco. And, you know, when you land on a flight, I'll be honest, if people clap when we land, I'm not really about that. That's not for me. I expect to land. But apparently <laughs> the flight attendant wished the passengers to have a blessed night or a blessed evening or whatever it is. This really upset this editor from Mother Jones, Aaron. She really popped off. Clara Jeffrey is her name. She had to tweet about it or X about it or whatever. Creeping Christian nationalism alert. This is what she writes. Alaska Airlines flight attendant just wished us a blessed night as we landed in San Francisco to groans. People are groaning about being wished a blessed flight. Other adjectives that would have sufficed. Great, awesome, fabulous, amazing, fantastic. As my roommate said, this ain't Montgomery, sweetie. Aaron, what's what's the problem with wishing a blessed night to people? You know, I think that's a nice thing. I think that I would welcome that. What's what's the problem with this lady? And I mean, I'd really like to know how she was so highly offended by that and why she thinks it's Christian nationalism creeping in. Liberals hate religion because at their heart, that's what socialism is. They don't want to believe in anything other than themselves. They are so arrogant and so deluded. There can be no higher power. They have to be the ultimate authority. The women that are on Mother Jones as authors and as readers are those childless cat ladies, okay? They're the blue hair, armpit hair, facial piercing. Some look really cute, but you know, you know with the descriptors here. I'm being very honest. I actually perused after reading this article some other Mother Jones articles. There was one um, that talked about how conservatives believe in this conspiracy or something called natural immunity. <laughs> conspiracy what? what you know so mother jones this is about as far left as you get so they want to always be victimized by something right if the pilot said yeah if i hun and you know it's an old like you call me hun you misogynistic so there is this group of people that hate god and have to be victims so i'm going to serve you mother jones on a silver platter that's them it's olivia they just all seem very angry to me like very you would have to be yeah, very angry like person yeah. to get upset about this yeah it's a very dumb thing to get upset about and i wonder yeah. if she would have been as upset if the flight attendant had said you know inshallah or something like that right or referenced some different religion she would have been like oh it's so inclusive it's yeah. great and inclusive so i think that uh yeah these people really should get off themselves and realize that their worldview is not shared by everyone in the united states or in the world and that their their perspective on this um is more offensive than being wished a blessed day right i mean you need the, those the, blessings you're going to san fran you might get like poop <laughs> like there's poop on the street and needles yeah, everywhere like, have, on i take will take a blessing, blessing. <laughs> yeah totally I mean, I, I don't know the alternative here. Would this have been less offensive if like she would have given them all the finger on their way out? I don't know. This is it's so wild to me that this is something someone got so upset about. They had to post about it and really just get outraged. But you're right. They're looking to be victimized. Everybody needs to be the victim these days. It's really sad and really sick. And it's the reason why uh, we need Donald Trump back in the White House, mm -hmm. because I'll tell you, Nothing would make me happier than knowing I really upset this group of people because they <laughs> I'll just be part of their their issue of going forward for the next four years. But Aaron and Libby, thank you both, as always, for joining us here on The Right View to everybody at home. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View. Thank you. And I won't back down. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies 
who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it.